Hi guys, I'm Suni and I'm going into my third year of medical school in September and a lot of you have actually requested that I make a video explaining how I got into medical school and the process, so that's what I'm doing today. I went through the application process not too long ago, um, it's still kind of fresh and the PTSD is ingrained in my memory, so I think I can give you quite up-to-date advice. So just a disclaimer, I applied in the UK, I go to university in London, so this applies to the UK mainly, but I think some of the advice I'll be giving is probably universal. But yes, I am in the UK system. So here in the UK, how it works is that you first have to finish school and do A-levels, so that brings you up to the age of about 17 or 18, and in your last year of A-levels, um, so when you're 17, 18, you apply to medical school and you don't have to do pre-med, you just apply directly to medical school here. Now let's get on to the actual application. How do you make a good application? So the first thing which is probably quite obvious to all of you guys is that you need to have really good grades. And this is not just at A-level, this is also including your GCSEs. I'm not saying that if you have a few B's and C's or if you don't have the best grades that you won't get in, I'm just saying that to make a really strong application, you need to have ideally A's and A stars at GCSE and then also A's and A stars at A level. Just speaking from my experience and talking to the people who are medical students now around me, most of the people I know did have basically straight A's and A stars for GCSE and similar for A level. I'm not going to talk about what I got individually because I don't think it's important. All I think it's important to say is that yes, I did have A's and A stars because I don't want to seem like I'm bragging and I think as long as you know that you need to have A's and A stars it probably doesn't really help me telling you what I got. Anyway, for A-levels, most people applying to medicine do have chemistry and biology and those subjects will just help you through medical school anyway. Um, and then the third one, you don't have to do maths, you don't have to do physics, you can do anything you like. I'd say try to do a more academic one, so some people do English literature, some people do history, most people do maths or physics. For me, I did biology, chemistry and physics and I also did an extended project. I see medical school applications as just jumping through hoop after hoop until you finally get to the interview stage and I think at each stage you just have to meet the requirements to get through that hoop. So for GCSEs and A-levels, as long as you have A's and A-stars, you're through that hoop and you're on to the next stage. If you have too many B's and C's, if you don't have enough A's and A-stars, then what medical schools tend to do is they will just filter your application out before you get through the hoop, if that makes sense. Is that a good example? I don't think so, but yeah, it's about jumping through hoops and meeting each requirement. After grades, I think work experience is also important. This is not just to show the medical schools that you have done it. It's also so that you can make sure that medicine is for you or just have a better idea if medicine is for you. Ideally, you want to get some work experience in a hospital and that doesn't have to be a year long. It can just be a week or two. I'd say getting something else like in a GP surgery, in a care home, in a hospice is also pretty good. So I did two weeks of work experience in a hospital and that was on a geriatric ward, which is a medical way of saying elderly people. I then did about a year once a week where I would go to a hospital ward. Again, it was a geriatric ward um, and I would just help at meal times, help feed the patients. Well, not, I wasn't actually allowed to feed them because they might choke, just speak to them and assist them in eating, but not actually feed them. That was a bit of a weird thing. I wasn't allowed to feed them. Anyway, I also did about a year and a half in a hospice where again, I would go once a week during dinner time and I would help serve the food and get patients drinks and sometimes just talk to them or their families. Getting work experience is really important, all volunteering, um, because it shows you more about the medical field, it shows you more about what doctors do, what nurses do, how the medical team communicates with each other and really just confirms with you if medicine is for you or if it's not for you. So when I was on a work experience, I just remember feeling really interested in what the doctors were doing and it really sort of confirmed for me that I was going in the right direction and that this is something that I wanted to do. Oh my God, I'm getting a leg cramp. Okay, so so far we've talked about grades, we've talked about work experience. Okay, now extracurricular. So the way you talk about your work experience and your extracurricular things is on your personal statement, which is basically a side of 
um, one piece of paper that you write online for your university application and this is what the medical school will read to learn about your work experience and to learn about what you do outside of um, academics. So extracurricular stuff is just to show that you have a life outside of um, academics and that you can relieve your stress and that you're not going to be a medical student who can't cope with the pressures of medicine. So any sort of hobby that you have um, is something which is classed as extracurricular. The things that I did was I was on the student council at school. Um, what else did I do? I helped run the medical society at my school. Um, and it's just little things like that. To be honest, I'm quite an introverted person, so I wasn't that involved with extracurricular activities. And you don't have to be, you know, a grade eight piano player and on the national football team. As long as you have some things that show you have a bit of personality and a bit of a way to unwind um, is all that they're looking for. And obviously extracurricular is less important than your work experience and your grades, but it's something that you need to have on your application. Recap, we've talked about your grades, your work experience and your extracurriculars, and we've talked about how your work experience and your extracurriculars, how you write those on your personal statement, which the medical school can read. One extra thing that I haven't talked about yet is the admissions tests. Now in the UK we have two main different admissions tests that you do on top of your A-levels and these are the UK CAT and the BMAT. The UK CAT is, it's a strange test, I absolutely hated it. I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail because I've kind of forgotten and this video will be too long if I talk about it but just to make you aware that there is an admissions test called the UK CAT which most universities use and then there is the BMAT. Um, which is the one that my university uses. And this is a more scientific exam. The UK CAT is more of like a weird aptitude. IQ, it's kind of an, it's kind of an IQ test apparently, um, whereas the BMAT is more straight science, but those exams are difficult and unusual, I think. Ugh. I, don't, I didn't like them. If you have good grades, A's and A stars, if you have got work experience and you've reflected on it and you've thought about it and you have some extracurricular activities, and you've submitted your personal statement to your medical schools, the next thing that, that you need to do is wait to hear back from them. If they think you're suitable, they will offer you an interview. And then if you pass the interview, they'll give you an offer. There's basically two types. There's the multiple mini interview, which is where you have loads of different stations and you basically go around and there's different scenarios. There might be like a math station. It's just things like that. Um, and then the traditional panel interview, which is the type of interview that my university has, which is where there's just three interviewers usually, um, and they'll ask you questions. They'll talk about your personal statement. So I think I've kind of been through the whole process and given you an outline of what you need to do. Medical school applications, it's really competitive. It's very, you know, it's tough. It's one of the most difficult courses to get onto. So I understand if you feel stressed or if you feel concerned about the process, but I think as long as you, you know, you're meeting each requirement and you're jumping through each hoop, you really put yourself in a strong position. If you have really good grades, if you have work experience, if you have some extracurriculars, and you know, if you've researched medical schools and you know what you're getting yourself into, then I think you stand a really good chance. If there's any other questions, please write them in the comments and I can try to reply. I usually reply to comments. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.